SketchUp is really easy to learn and to start using, but if you don't do the following, you could wind up with some major, major regrets. I certainly did. So today I'm going to show you the best practices to help you model in SketchUp for iPad like a pro. I'm Kevo Scott and this is Goose. We are going to model Parsons tables. One is not quite as easy, but it's pretty easy. We are just going to do a warm up with a super simple Parsons table. One of the most commercially popular tables, definitely probably the most commercially popular Parsons table. And I'm talking about the 1299 lac side table from Ikea. The first thing. Let's get started modeling the lac side table from Ikea. First thing we want to do is start a new drawing. So I'm going to hit that arrow because I want to make sure that I'm in decimal centimeters since that's the units that Ikea provides for the dimensions of the lac side table. And then I'm going to hit create new here. So I'm going to go down here to delete, get the view where I want it to be. You can also go in here under scenes, camera, and change that to top plan view, top. Let's do parallel projection, it makes it a little easier. So I'm just going to start by drawing out a rectangle and then I'm going to go in and type 55 by 55. Best practice number one and that is type or tap in your dimensions. Don't try to just drag your pencil or drag your mouse to, hit, to draw the exact dimension. Type it in. And now I can just ro use my finger to rotate. I know that this top is five centimeters thick, so let's extrude that out. Let's pick the extrude tool, just pull that up. Just start the action that you want and then go ahead and type it in or enter it in this context menu. The next thing I want to do is just select this top. And then I'm going to go down here to these three boxes and I'm going to give this a name, top. Best practice number two, make groups or components. This will keep everything from sticking together and keep your parts nice and clean and organized. So now I have a component for the top. Now I want to just make a note that there's a lot of ways to, the, to model these things and this may not be the most efficient but the purpose of going through this process is using guides here to mark out the legs is that it just gives you another tool in your toolbox in order to make really good high quality models. The next thing, let's draw out the legs. So to do that I want to make sure that I'm drawing them the proper dimensions so I want to start with the tape measure tool and just create a guide off the bottom and I know that these legs are five centimeters as well so I'm just going to type in five and then I'm just going to go around the box and do that for all sides because that will give me the exact rectangles at these intersections that will be number three use guides to your advantage to model the in the correct size and the correct position I'm going to go here to the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw out one and then I am going to extrude that by 40 centimeters because the overall height is 45 centimeters. Tap in 40 centimeters, enter, boom, I've got my leg. Now, a nice trick to be able to select this leg, sort of everything attached to this geometry to make sure that getting everything into the component is just to triple click it. So just like that, one, two, three, real fast. And then I'm gonna go here to these three boxes and then I'm gonna type this in here, leg. Okay, now I want to copy this around the table to complete it. So I'm going to go to my move tool and then I'm going to select this, the move tool with the plus button and that's move with copy. And then do, I'm going to grab it from a corner that I can relate to this other corner over here. Kind of need to think ahead spatially. Okay, if I'm if I want to connect to this point, I'm going to start at this point, right? So that's um, just something you kind of have to pay attention to. Now, real quick, I'm just going to go back to the arrow. I'm going to pick this leg again, and I'm going to do what I just said. And I'm going to copy it from this point, and then I'm going to snap to the corner. And then, you know, I don't need to go back to that initial leg. All these components are going to be linked anyways. So I want to start at the intersection here, and I can just pull it down to the side and there we have our lack side table and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the guide tool and I actually really appreciate this in SketchUp with the iPad it makes it super easy I'm just gonna delete this top one is little trash can with the guides chances are you have actually owned one of these or at least set your drink on one at a friend's house and I'm going to guess that you didn't use a coaster let me know in the comments if you even think a coaster is appropriate for a lax side table if you're new to SketchUp these best practices may not be so obvious they weren't to me and frankly 
<sighs> I've received a lot of bad models over the years, a lot of bad SketchUp models where these best practices weren't observed, so I'm guessing they're really not obvious. Don't worry, just watch this and Goose and I will keep you out of trouble. The Parsons Table is a product of the classroom of famed interior designer Jean-Michel Frank at the Paris Atelier. He challenged his students to design a table that would be so simple that it would retain its design integrity despite the finish. And they used a lot of weird finishes back then. The Paris Atelier became the Parsons School and the table was said to have been crafted by a Parsons handyman and thus we have the name Parsons Table. Interesting fact, Jean-Michel Frank was actually a cousin of the diarist Anne Frank if you if you've read Anne Frank's diaries, which I think is fascinating. The defining feature of the Parsons table is that the legs come up flush to the top. First thing we want to do is go to create new, and then I'm going to pick decimal because the dimensions I have uh, for this and the overall dimensions are also for decimal. And just like before, I always delete this little fella first. And then I'm just going to get my view into a place that gives me a good start. I'm not going to bother going to plan view this time and draw out my rectangle. And let's go ahead and enter the dimensions. This time we're going to do 70 by 70 centimeters. And just go ahead and extrude up. And this time I want to extrude up two and a half centimeters. Type that in, hit enter. Now let's find a nice view to grab this and select the top and make this a component. There we go. I'm just going to name this top. Very easy. And just as we did before, let's proceed with drawing the legs. We'll start by snapping to the corner and then this time let's draw out the square and then we can enter six by six. Okay, now let's take the tape measure and what we're gonna do is just grab from the edge and then we're gonna pull it down. You wanna be sure to snap to the blue so that we have a reference point from the top. And I'm just gonna drop it and then I'm gonna enter. Well, let's try it again pull it down and then I'm just going to drop it so I have a reference for the overall dimension and then I want to change that length to 70 and then let's go ahead and extrude the leg down and snap to that guide. Guides are a really great way to just eliminate a lot of extra arithmetic as you model but if you love math go for it. This leg tapers so what I want to do is I want to select that bottom face and let's go ahead and scale pick this one for about center that way we scale around the center of the face and I'm just gonna pull it in and then I can go ahead and type to get the exact I want 0.5 and now we have a leg that's tapered so now we want to make this a component so go ahead and select the leg go down here to the component symbol that's the one in the middle and then let's just type in leg to name it and there we go we have our first leg now to make the rest of the legs we're going to want to copy around the table so that's the arrow arrows with a plus sign let's copy from corner to corner and then let's take both of these legs over to the other side to complete our four legs oops wrong side let's try it again Remember, you kind of have to think of this visually and plan ahead. So boom, there we go. And that makes it a lot easier when the points correlate like that. Now we need to draw the skirt that's underneath the top between the legs on each side. And there is actually three parts to this. Uh, when we look at the reference image of the table, so to do this, I'm just going to want to use the pencil because that'll make it easier to snap to that taper, but I need to figure out the dimension from the edge. And I think it looks like it's about 14. So let's go ahead and draw out those guides and make those 14 
from the edge of the top. And I'm using the edge of the top because that's not tapered. So, and then you'll see I'm just drawing with a pencil here. I wanna make sure that I'm constraining to the green axis so that stays, you know, parallel to the floor or, or perpendicular to that last line I drew. Practice number four, use constraints where they make sense. So those little uh, context menu buttons that are next to any sort of transform tools like move and rotate that have the little uh, red, blue, and green lines, use those because they're gonna help you to be able to move things around and make transformations in the exact way that you want to make them. That way the only side that has any kind of angle is the sides that meet the taper of the leg. And to match it up on this back side, let's just, just tap this face and pull it out so that at least the bottom matches up. And then we'll tap the face and rotate. along that axis to line it up and I can just snap to the edge and now I have that face perfectly aligned to the leg. And let's make this a component. We'll call it rail block. I don't know, for some reason that makes sense to me. I probably should say skirt or something like that but that's okay. Okay, let's copy it to the other side using our copy tool. And then here, I don't wanna just copy it over because it really needs to be mirrored, meaning that side with the angle face needs to, needs to flip. Now, one way to do this is you could flip it along the axis, but Really, since I'm doing two and, you know, just to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and do a rotate copy. So I'm draw, drawing an X here in the table. You can do it with a line and go to the midpoint, but the X makes it a little bit clearer, a little bit easier where that point is to grab. And this is just reference line work. And then I'm gonna grab the copy rotate tool, and then I'm going to rotate 180 and that accomplishes the mission. And now those blocks on the other side meet the legs perfectly. So now we can just go ahead and do that again to get the opposite side. And this time I'm just going 90. So we have all four sides. All eight blocks. And I want to draw a rectangle to complete this rail that goes in between the two blocks, the rest of the skirt. And then I'm going to grab that with the triple click and make it a component and I'm just calling it rail mid and I can pretty easily copy this around the rest of the table using the reference points or I could I could also use the rotate copy I don't know why it's automatically grabbing rotate I'm gonna pull it up above the table so that's easier to see and then I'm gonna snap to that back point since that's where I started from You can see, you know, when things are symmetrical, it gives you a lot of flexibility, but when they're not, you really have to be careful. Make sure you understand the geometry that you're working with. And then let's go ahead and delete these reference lines on the top. 
and then let's go into the tape measure tool and hit that top button to delete guides. Love that feature in SketchUp for iPad. And there we go. There's your table. To find out more about the new SketchUp for iPad, make sure you check out this video where I give my sort of first thoughts on SketchUp for iPad uh, and talk about some of the things that surprised me and best yet, some of my favorite features.